the congregation should please rise. We face the west door. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of Oluyinka, our brother in Christ, for burial. Let us pray with confidence to God, the giver of life that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. I have said God always before me, for he is on my right hand, therefore I shall not fall. I have said God always before me, for he is on my right hand, therefore I shall not fall. For why? Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, neither shalt thou suffer thy only one to see corruption. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Unto the Lord, whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I know that my belief Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at a later day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, Yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and not as a stranger. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor past, nor height, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so says the Spirit for the rest from their labors. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain 
we carry nothing out. The Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted.
The first Bible reading is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 10 to the end. It's on page 8. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his dirt, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained, or am I already perfected, but I press on that I may ho lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward for those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many are, as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who, and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in, the, in their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we, ha we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. This is the word of God.
Second Bible reading is taken from John chapter 5, verses 19 to 25. John chapter 5, verses 19 to 25. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But he, but what he sees, the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives, them, and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. This is the word of God. As we take the next aim, the dust word we come round to take seed of faith.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who had bound together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, grant, we pray you, to your old church in paradise and on earth, your light and your peace. Grant that all those who have been cleansed by the death and resurrection of Christ may die to sin and rise to newness of life. And through your grace, we may pass through the gates of death to your joyful resurrection. Grant to us, who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Grant to your people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Grant to those who mourn, especially the family of Oluyinka, our brother in Christ, a sure foundation in your fatherly care, that casting all their grief on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, and the resurrection of life everlasting. Grant us grace to entrust Oluyinka into your feeling love, receive him into the hands of your mercy, and remember him according to the favor which you have given to your children. Grants that increasing in knowledge and love of you, we may grow from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in your heavenly kingdom. Amen.
I speak in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want to welcome all of us to this service. And I want to pray that what God has prepared to bless us with today shall not elude us in the mighty name of Jesus. Briefly, I want to speak on doing what God wants. Doing what God wants. And in approaching this theme, the parable of the two sons, as told by our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 to 31, comes in handy. And that we serve as a springboard for this address. Permit me to read this passage. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. If we look into any functional family setting, one thing that we jump at us is that parents, we customarily make demands on their children and they expect them to live up to expectations. Growing up, when you're talking about who we go to fetch something, and they are talking about Bola we go. I will just find a way of dodging it. I got spanked for that many times. When parents are doing this, they go about it by establishing rules and guidelines that their children are expected to follow and oftentimes, these rules are their desires, which they want their children to pursue and accomplish. We know that when you have a wish and you share it with any of your children, and he or she obliged, you'll be happy. That's my daughter. That's my son. And the disobliging child will definitely not curry your favor. This is what our Lord Jesus Christ used in this parable. Going from the known to the unknown. The father wanted the children to go to his vineyard to walk. He went to the firstborn, go. I will not, sir. But he had a change of mind, and he went. The second said, I will go. And he did not. He put his father to his coming. <laughs> As it is in the physical family setting, so it is in the spiritual family of God. God, who is the father of all, makes demands on humankind. We are not here at our own instance. We are here at his instance. 
is the potter. We are clay in his hand and he has formed us to pursue certain purposes for him. He makes demands. Maybe I should open our eyes into seeing some of his demands. He wants everyone to receive his offer of salvation. Without this offer of salvation, we are hopeless in the world. We are hopeless in our sin and cannot be good enough for him. Remember, his eyes are too pure and cannot behold sin. So he wants everyone to receive his offer of salvation. I want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For our sake, he made him to be seen who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. One of his demands. The second, we find that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, but grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and to the day of eternity. God wants his children to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Acceptance of his salvation offer brings us into God's family. That is when we decide to come under the leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are adopted into the family of God and we are not expected to remain as runt. We must grow. If you have a child of 10 years and is thinking like a three-year-old, you will not be pleased to showcase him or her. We must grow in grace. We must grow in the knowledge of the captain of our salvation. God wants his children to impact the world with the message of the gospel. When Jesus Christ was going, he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. I'm still talking about the demands of God on his children. From Micah chapter 6 verse 8, we discover more of what God wants. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. God making demands on his children. This morning, we are gathered here celebrating a life lived to, you know, a life lived for God, a life lived doing what God wants. I can say that again and again. Papa Omololu what God wants. He lived up to expectations of God for him. He accepted the offer of salvation. He was born again. He surrendered totally to Christ. If you were there yesterday, when the doctor gave his tribute. He said at some point in his life, on Sundays, he will sleep while they go to church. But at some point also, he came to the knowledge of Christ and surrendered totally. And so instead of sleeping at home, he became a permanent resident in church. He is a Christian. 
Mark my word. He is a Christian. I'm not saying he was a Christian. <laughs> to us, he's dead. To God, he is alive. He is a Christian. Not everyone in church can carry that appellation. <laughs> I ask people to define who a Christian is. And you see them talking, hey, well, a Christian is the one who is in the church who has been baptized. Mm -mm. A Christian is a student in Christ school. I'm not talking about Christ school. I do a kitty. A disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ who will never graduate. Who will continue to remain at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ receiving from him alone. Papa Omololu is a Christian. Not even all pastors can carry that appellation. Not only that, he is a Christian. He knew quite all right that he must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, he did not joke with training and retraining of himself. In July 2005, our path crossed. And what I saw in him is a passion, irrepressible passion to increase in knowledge. He will always have something new to study. We talk about Alpha Course Nigeria. He brought that course to Nigeria. He started it here in the cathedral and it has grown leaps and bands. At some point, he looked at the Cathedral Church of Christ and he said, Bola, <laughs> we need to uh, understand how we are faring. And he said, go and design a survey, a questionnaire. I sat in my office, I came up with a questionnaire, I presented it to him, he studied it, he made some Amendment and said, let us administer it. We sent the questionnaire to churches around, inviting people to come and worship in the cathedral and to give us their views about the church. I collated, I analyzed, we sat down and we looked at it. What can we improve on? Do we talk about discipleship courses? Capro Many, he will always look for something new. He said, Bola, which book are you reading now? <laughs> In my tribute, I put something there. I said, <laughs> an exceptional ghost general goes home. Always willing to be on the battlefield for Christ. He knew that he must not be barren. Many Christians today are barren. The offer of salvation that they have received has remained with them solely. They have not extended it to, them, to others. Some are even ashamed to share the gospel. I don't want them to call me names. Baba Omololu undauntedly pursued the cause of rescue the perishing, caring for the dying, and snatching the oppressed from the power of sin and grave with utmost responsibility and irrepressible devotion. We are talking about an evangelist a missionary by excellence. He acted justly in all his dealings. 
he lived with a sense of right and wrong and deal honestly and fairly with those around him. He was eager to show mercy. He was eager to show mercy. He walked humbly with his God by seeking only his blessing and approval on life decision. We are celebrating a man whose creed and conduct are not at variance. You see some people say, I'm a Christian, but there is nothing to show for it. I've shared from this pulpit. We were on evangelistic movement. We were going uh, before coming into the ministry. We were sharing tracts to people on the street of uh, Alakia Isheboy in Ibadan. And a man said, this boy, are you sure he goes to church? If he is the one sharing this gospel, then I won't come to that church. Cogging the wheel of the progress of the course of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He would read, I, I put here, I said, noteworthy is his ability to avoid unhealthy excess of anything that could lead to negative consequences. He won't grab. I remember one, we used to have a driver in this church, Mr. Isaac. We were talking that day. You know, your subordinate, they gossip about the alga. He said, I don't know, Baba, we eat. We just eat small food. He said, these rich people, I don't know their problem. When we are looking for big, big amala, he said, we just be eating just one echo. Yeah. He will readily forgo instant and immediate gratification and pleasure for the sake of Christ and his kingdom. He matched his preaching with action and his faith with works. Good works. He was not vainglorious and not given to ostentation. I pray at this time that his gentle soul we rest in peace. Yeah. I know his wish. He was my teacher. He received me into the cathedral and taught me the way of the cathedral. And Christianity, practical Christianity, I can say it anywhere. I know his wish. I know he will want me to challenge you. On this occasion, he will want me to ask you, are you doing what God wants? Yes, I know somebody will say, I'm in church, I'm a member of a church. Mm -hmm. But that will not suffice. We're talking about a church today, church of today, where you see evil men Flexing muzzle inside the church. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, we enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven will enter. Are you doing what God wants? I understand your dilemma. You desire, like Paul, you desire to do what is good, but the flesh is weak. It is correct. The sinful nature is universal in humanity. All of us have a sinful nature, and it affects every part of us. And that is why we struggle a lot. We want to do good, but the good that we want to do, we cannot do because we are still slaves to the sinful nature. Paul himself admits that the trouble is with him. In Romans chapter 7 verse 14, he says, The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Romans chapter 8, 
verses 7 and 8. As I'm looking at you, you need a change of niche where you derive your nourishment from. You need to come to Christ Jesus. Baba Omololu, <laughs> I refer to him, you know, there is a phrase, he likes making friend for Jesus. That is running with the vision of the ministry of reconciliation. You need to come to Jesus. Only in him we are enabled to do what God wants. Do you know why it is so? Coming to Jesus, we change your being. And your being will in turn influence your doing. Doing can be faked. Some people, you see some people, they can mimic holiness. You see them when they are coming for Holy Communion. They walk piously. to the pulpit, to the altar. And immediately, they go outside there. They drop their church mind just at the west door and carry the world mind and they become something else. You need to come to Jesus to change your being, to change who you are so that you will be able to act accordingly. Another challenge that I know Papa Omololu will like me to put across to you, are you growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus our Lord? How is your fellowship with the word of God? Somebody was talking about him. He said, Papa Omololu made me to be reading my Bible daily. And I read it every day. And I've covered the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. How is your fellowship with the word of God? You know, you can't grow without the word of God. You need to crave that pure spiritual milk. So by it, you may grow up in your salvation. Are you productive? Can you point to a soul that, yes, I preached to this man and the Holy Spirit has giving him to me as a spiritual child. Do you even share your faith? I want to read to you John chapter 15 verses 1 and 2. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Why? Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Be productive. How practical are you in your Christianity? Is there any correlation between your creed and conduct? Your faith and your work? I need to let you know that doing what God wants is profitable for here and in the hereafter. Because it will save you not only here but also in the Arab. Let, let me share this to conclude. In 1987, I wanted to travel down to Lagos for something. And my mother said, Bola, I will not give you money if you don't go to where I am sending you. So she tied my action to that money. In, she knew quite all right that I would not like to miss my coming to Lagos. So I went. Before that time, I was planning something with a friend of mine. We wanted to do something. We wanted to experiment something that we have seen in some books. So I went. I obeyed my mother. That obedience saved me. I would have 
been dead by now. Because my friend carried on, you know, continued with what we had planned. And on that day, my bosom friend died. He was electrocuted. And we were going to do it together. But because of my obedience, I was saved. If you obey God, you will escape the snares of the enemies, the snares of the fowlers, because God will always guide you aright. Doing what God wants will give you an inheritance in the hereafter. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. What are you doing? Bow down your heads. Ask God to touch you. If you are yet to know Christ, surrender to him. Invite him into your life. Ask him to be there. Controlling you. Surrender to him. Ask him to wash away your sins. Ask him to clothe you with his righteousness. If you are barren, ask God to do his work in you so that you will be productive henceforth. Ask God to nourish you so that you will grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you have prayed, God will answer your prayers. What I'm left with is to offer our condolences and congratulations to the family. Condolences because you have lost someone there. Congratulations because God has given you this grace to survive him. And not just <laughs> like that. He lived well. He lived well. He lived well. I pray the grace to carry on with this legacy. God Almighty will grant unto you. Amen. Mommy, the Holy Spirit is your friend now. Consult with him and you'll be happy all through your life. In the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. I invite Dukbe Akinola Ige Kachi for his solo.
I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees? I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day, Uluyenka, our brother in Christ. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as companion of our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We commend you, our brother, Olu Yinka, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. O oh Lord, be merciful to all travelers, especially those who have traveled from far and near places to commiserate with the bereaved and grant them as every turn, bless, guide and defend them, prosper them in their cause, that they be holding your mercy and praising you for goodness here. May the more be quickened with the desire for the full enjoyment of their privileges as fellow citizens with the saints in your heavenly household. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please sit back. We move straight on to song tributes. And I want to invite Egbado College Old Student Association to take their song tributes. are doing of all those students, both young and old. You have aura of coming stormy weather. The way you talk, we used to follow your advice. Usually, Baba will say, Happy New Year. Today, you are the national president. If you don't talk, I won't talk. And once you talk, 
all stormy weather will calm down. So we want to sing the Sue's song so that people will understand they are, you are indeed the doing of the old student. Through the green leaves far away in a mother's days and days where the cocoa grows again stands a bad college world happy tidings and says a newborn college in Allah such a place you wish to see let the land with news is spread a story for war spread the news from town to town what a father's young to We've got now forever obscure. Thank you, sir. No, no. Please let us note if you have too many stanzas in your anthem, just take the first and the last. The first and the last stanzas. Brotherhood of young men. First and the last stanza. Song tribute only. No speeches. CTB, CTB, first and the last stanzas.
Thank you, Christian companions. Thank you, old grammarians.
St. Paul's Bread Fruit Progressives. Cathedral Torchbearers Cathedral Torchbearers
Thank you. Kindly bear with us. We have a long list here because Papa Omolulu was a man of many parts. Lagos Dasisa Medical Commission and Cathedral Medical Society. Thank you. Elders Fellowship.
Thank you. Cathedral Parish Awardees. Cathedral Parish Awardees. Cathedral Guild of Stewards.
Thank you. The Lord be with you. I want to thank God for the life and times of our beloved Papa, the very Reverend Commodore Dr. Oluyinka Ibikunle Omolulu, who has been called to rest at this time. I want to pray that light perpetual we shine upon his soul, and at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will rise in glory. I must welcome specially as church fathers here present. We have eminent church prelates who are here celebrating the life of Papa Omolulu. My honor to welcome and recognize the most reverend Dr. Peter Jasper Akinola, retired primate, metropolitan, and archbishop, Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. You are welcome, sir. The Lord will continue to renew your strength, even in retirement. Also with us is the most reverend Dr. Olushegun Adeyemi, retired Archbishop of Kwara Province and Bishop of Kwara Dauces. You are welcome, sir. Also, we have here today the most reverend Dr. Shegun Okubadejo, retired Archbishop Ibadan Province and the citizen of Ibadan North. You are welcome, sir. I want to recognize the right Reverend Joseph Akiyemi Odejide, retired Bishop of E4. Thank you for coming, sir. I recognize the right Reverend George Bako, retired Bishop of Lokoja. I recognize the presence of the right Reverend Solomon Betogo Kukponu, the assistant Bishop of Ijebu North. He's not here alone, he's there with Mama Ijebu North. Thank you for coming, sir. We have with us the Venerable Shegwa Jayi, who is the Dean of the Cathedral Church of St. Jude's, Ebutemeta, uh, Diocese of Lagos, mainland, representing the Bishop, the Right Reverend Akim Pelu Johnson. <clears throat> representing a uh, supervising Bishop in the Diocese of Lagos, uh, the Right Reverend Dr. James Olushola Odedeji. Uh, the Venerable Dr. Kelvin Tokpetakpere. You are welcome. Thank you for coming. He's the vicar of the Church of the Pentecost, Festac Tan. We have with us the former executive governor of Lagos State and honorable minister for works and housing, His Excellency Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, SAN. Thank you for coming. Also, we have the presence of former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Chief Mrs. Saratu Uchikutu. I must deliver this message because um, it is important. I have with me the commiserations of uh, S.Y. Dawsisan, and Dean of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, the Most Reverend Doctor Ephraim Adibola Adimowo, O-O-N, PhD, FNL, says, is with the family in prayer that God Almighty will continue to uphold you and keep you under his protection. We have eminent legal luminaries of our diocese, ably led by uh, the Chancellor, Honorable Justice Adedayo Uyibanji, 
You are welcome, ma. I should recognize also the Chancellor of our National Church, Mr. Odein Adjumogobia, S-A-N. You are welcome. Thank you for coming. We have a registrar in this diocese, Barista Shegun Ajayi. I recognize your presence. The Deputy Registrar, Mrs. Joy Ebele DK. I recognize your presence. Also, the Treasurer, Sir Golan Afolayan, you are highly recognized. We also have a Legal Secretary, Mrs. Tokwe Tolui Oui Ere. You are welcome and thank you for participating in this service. Uh, we, I can see the staff of office of the Ajaloru of Ijebu Ife, His Royal Majesty, Oba Dr. Umutayo. Kadepe Lori Kibata, Pelese, Ki Rukere, Kodi Okini. Also with us, you know, is a great concourse of clergymen from across. Uh, Lagos Diocese, Lagos, Mainland Diocese, Badagri, all over the country. Eminent Archikins and clergymen and clergy wives, you are highly recognized. I pray that God will give us grace to serve him well and in the hereafter to reign with him in glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I must bring to a notice that the interment is for members of the immediate family, only members of the family, only. Make sure you get your lunch pack before you leave the cathedral. The family we worship at St. Peter's Anglican Church, Faji. I don't know if it is the best church, but I will respect the departed on Sunday at 10 a.m. I want to recognize the presence of Papa Chief Olabode George Atono Odua of Yoruba land. You are highly recognized. Sorry for the oversight. I want to thank all those who have labored to make this service a success that it is. The Cathedral Choir you are highly recognized. God bless you. Jola Adi Oshun has been the one playing and assisted by Prince Will Ubani. I thank the Guild of Steward on duty. You will continue to be relevant in the scheme of things eternal. I team, thank you. The cleaners, the sextants, God Almighty will require a labor of love with abundance of his grace. As we go, the Lord will go with us. We will not fall. We will not falter. On the day of our own departure, it will be glorious for all of us in Jesus' name. The order of withdraw, the choir we lead, followed by the clergy. The body will come after the clergy and the children and mama will come after the body. Once again, May the soul of the faithful departed, through the mercies of God, rest in peace. We take the theodium, standing theodium. 